Hello and welcome to another podcast. Today we're going to continue with medications and we're going to look at metronidazole. So metronidazole is one of the mainstream drugs. Uh, it's used for treatments in anaerobic bacterial infections, protozoal infections, and special types of bacteria that are microaerophilic, which basically means they can survive on small amounts of oxygen. And they're also effective and cytotoxic against your fulcative aerobic microbes. So that basically means that they can live in both aerobic and anaerobic environments. So fancy words, it basically means that it works on bacterial infections that need little to no oxygen and protozoa. For us, we use it for things like freshwater wounds, especially if it's contaminated, secondary treatment for human bites and animal bites. Uh, necrotizing gingivitis, PID, STIs, vaginitis. It's very effective for things like guardia and schismoniasis. Uh, and it's also useful to give if you have an open fracture in combination with other drugs. Looking at its pharmacokinetics, it's one of those drugs that's quite unique as far as the class goes, and it's readily absorbed around the entire body. It really only penetrates the aerobes and aerobic and the protozoas, but it's diffused pretty much throughout. It has a bioavailability of 90%, so it actually is attracted into the cells. It only has a protein bounding of about 20%, uh, which leads to its half-life being quite short for an antibiotic, which is the eight hours. It's metabolized in the liver primarily, but it's also further metabolized within the microbe itself, which we'll discuss in pharmacodynamics. It has five active metabolites and they're all excreted mostly in the kidneys and a little bit in feces. When we look at the pharmacodynamics of the actual medication, the mechanism of action works with metronidazole diffusing. So it actually goes through passive diffusion into the organism and it inhibits protein synthesis by interacting with the DNA itself. So not the messenger RNA, but it actually goes to the DNA itself and causes a loss in the helical DNA structure. And it causes the strands to break down. And this leads to the cell's death. Now the mechanism can be broken down into four steps. The first one is the diffusion in across the cell membrane of your anaerobic and some aerobic pathogens. However, the Antimicrobial effects are limited to that of the anaerobic only. Once it's in, it involves itself in reductive activation of the intracellular transport proteins and alters the chemical structures within. Now, as it alters it, this causes the breakdown and the reduction in metronidazole itself. And the actual reduction of metronidazole and the breakdown of the protein creates a concentration gradient that actually causes more metronidazole to be promoted to come into the cell. Once you have an influx of metronidazole in the cell with the breaking down of its internal transport proteins, then it can actually act on the intracellular target and become cytotoxic by interacting with the DNA and breaking that down itself. Okay, the final step involves the actual breakdown of the cytotoxic products within the organism, causing the cell or the bacterium to die. Now, when we look at adverse effects and contraindications, there's quite a lot of adverse effects and quite common as well. It's quite a rough drug to give, which is why it's often given for your larger, more difficult infections and your protozoas as well. Now, the main adverse effects you'll get 18% of the time is your headaches. It's also a 15% chance of vaginitis, 10 to 12% of nausea and vomiting, and there's also quite a common metallic taste that occurs about 9% of the time. Now, metronidazole comes with a warning that it may be carcinogenic, and studies in small animals, mice, rats, that sort of things, have shown a link to causing carcinogens. They believe it's got to do with the fact that it interacts with DNA, means it has a chance of affecting the oncogenes themselves.
Another warning associated with metronidazole exists when we're dealing with prolonged use of metronidazole. It has an increased risk of neurological disturbances and an accumulative risk of neurotoxicity. So it's often only given in very small courses and like I said, given for those proven high-end infections or cases where infections pose a great risk like your open fractures. Now, only true contraindication for it is a hypersensitivity, but there are a series of precautions that you need to consider that we'll discuss in clinical take-homes. Now, the first thing that needs to be considered with metronidazole is the taking of, of alcohol. Now, people will often say that when you're on antibiotics, you don't take alcohol. Now, whilst that's generally a good idea, the wives' tale was invented when pubs were basically open for two hours a night and people who were sick, they'd all congregate in the pub and they'll drink as much as they could within the two hours and then they'll go home. Now this increased the risk of obviously the person not getting better and passing on whatever infection they have, remembering that antibiotics were given to everything, including viruses and things like that in the past. But that story stuck. But when you're dealing with metronidazole, is actually a proper interaction with alcohol and metronidazole. Okay, metronidazole will actually cause or can cause what's known as a disulfiram effects. Now, disulfirams are often used in alcoholic and it immediately brings on the hangover symptoms of the actual alcohol. So taking metronidazole can make the person quite sick. And it has been shown that if someone has alcohol up to 14 days post a good treatment of metronidazole, they can also get these effects. Metronidazole also inhibits the breakdown of protein glycol, which are commonly found in your e-cigarettes. So if people are taking e-cigarettes and they're on metronidazole, metronidazole will work fine, but the polyline glycol from the e-cigarettes won't be able to be metabolized and you'll have a large glycol within the system can lead to things like diarrhea. Now it's best to avoid the use of metronidazole especially in the first trimester. So if you have a patient that could be pregnant and first trimester is often unknown, make sure you test them if you can before giving metronidazole. Now, there's a very, very high rate, as we discussed, of adverse effects, especially when uh, dealing with long-term use of metronidazole itself. Now, taking with food can ease the nausea and vomiting, and it delays the absorption, but it has no effect on the bioavailability because of how the drug actually works. So... That's it for metronidazole. It's quite a, a quick one. It's a very useful antibiotic, but needs to be taken with a little bit of education because it interacts with commonly used recreational substances. So just keep that in mind when instructing patients on the safe use of metronidazole. And until next time, take care.